Here we are, clan the isms, cataclysm, great. Our people out here struggling, trying to make it in this state. Everybody out here doing it, but we the ones who late. Now, family, we the ones who gotta delegate. Get that money in the power, never be fake. Stick to co sign for three. What did he say? Uh, create jobs, support our own. Educate the same and buy back your home. Got three degrees, triple ten. Three PhDs, now we on the CNN. DBTV, let's talk about negligence. Ignorance is bliss, but we can turn into intelligence. Believe none of what you hear, half of what you see. Let's break it down here on Dr. Boyce TV. Here we are. Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to the Black Financial Channel. This is theblackfinancialchannel.com. What I want to do real quick is give you a briefing on what happened in today's stock market. Today is uh, July 14th, 2020. And today was a good day, as Ice Cube used to say uh, back in the day. Uh, today was a very good day. The Dow Jones Industrial Average rose by about 556 points, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, the Dow basically has risen for three days in a row. Uh, it says it's rallied to 500 points as Caterpillar lead. So the big stock is Caterpillar. I can't remember if I own any Caterpillar. I know I own a few of the names that they mentioned here in this article. Uh, the Caterpillar is the best performing stock, uh, which rose 4%. ExxonMobil and Chevron went up. So a lot of energy stocks uh, took a big leap. Boeing went up. And so um, uh, I've, I've been a big believer that as the price of oil eventually goes up, uh, some of these uh, oil companies are going to do well. And so I've been a longtime shareholder in, in ExxonMobil and Chevron. I like Chevron because I like the size of the dividend. And uh, apparently the Chevron investment is paying off. Sentiment got a boost. Basically, uh, investor emotions became positive after it was announced that Florida had a reported daily coronavirus case increase that was below the seven day average. California's rate decreased slightly from Mondays as well. So basically this positive sentiment from reductions in uh, virus infections, uh, you know, it's, it, that's what is moved, moved the market today. That's pretty predictable. I mean, it, it's not, it would be almost unfathomable to imagine that they wouldn't get this thing under control. I believe that they always would. Um, I believe that when you open up, you're always gonna have a spike. And when you shut down again, you're going to reduce the spike, right? And then when they open up again, there's going to be another spike. And then they're going to reduce, then they're going to shut down again. It'll reduce the spike. And so it becomes these really interesting, uh, strange buying opportunities, in my opinion, because you're getting these artificial dips in the market. I mean, the, the, in fact, the original market decline related to the virus, to me, was artificial from the very beginning. I, I just said, this is sad because right now you get a chance to buy all these great companies for 40% off. Um, I just think that it's, it's, it's I mean, I, I think I see how this movie's gonna end. So anyway, Moderna, Moderna shares shot through the roof. Uh, Moderna, if you're a student in the stock market investing class, you'll go back and watch a video maybe about four or five weeks ago. And I mentioned to you guys that Moderna was a company that a lot of analysts were hot on, Moderna and Jaleed Sciences. And so Moderna, Finally, uh, that investment is paying off for you if you followed some of the recommendations that we laid out, or not recommendations, I, I don't recommend investments. What I do is I tell you guys when I'm buying in, um, in the Black Business School, and it uh, looks like Moderna is doing well. Moderna shares soared uh, after the company says that the virus vaccine trial produced a robust immune response, a robust immune response, which sounds to me like they're about to you know, deal with this thing. Uh, I think it was Jaleed Sciences that already basically came up with a process that significantly reduces the mortality rate. So, you know, rather than thinking of, of, of a, a corona case to be like HIV, where you're, you're going to die, you have a good chance of dying. I'm going to say you're going to die, but there's a good chance, because right? Magic Johnson, he'll, he'll probably outlive all of us, right? Rather than thinking of it as something, you know, as deadly as HIV, you might want to think of it, you know, it might eventually become like, I don't know, maybe herpes or something where people have it and they live and this, you know, whatever. So, so <clears throat> I personally think that they're going to keep whittling away at this virus. Eventually the big hurrah for the market is going to be when they announce that they have a vaccine that's in production and that it did well. Uh, right now, the quality of the headlines, I think is driving uh, some of what's happening in the market, but the market is looking past a lot of the negative headlines and looking at the long-term prospects of these companies, uh, which are many, some of whom are going to be severely damaged uh, as a result of this setback. Um, a lot of places that require human beings to be close to each other are going to struggle for a long, long time. But I believe some of these companies might make a comeback if they can convince their customers to come back to 
you know, like movie theaters, for example, I, you know, AMC, I, I'm a shareholder in AMC. Um, and I hold those shares because I believe AMC has the capital to get through this downturn. And I believe they can convince people to start going to the movies again. Uh, so they said that um, big tech actually was the laggard in this market, uh, Amazon, Netflix, et cetera. Um, and, uh, but that's only because the tech companies have been just blowing up. They're, they're the ones who've been leading the charge. NASDAQ has been, has, has hit record highs. Um, I think the Dow has barely passed its previous high pre COVID. Uh, but I think the NASDAQ hit the previous high first. So ultimately, uh, you're, you're seeing a situation where the tech stocks are rolling back a little bit because they shot up so much where people are starting to question the multiples, especially companies like Tesla, which isn't priced as an automobile manufacturer, it's priced as a tech company, which is why the multiples are ten, you know, just a ton higher than GM and Ford and stuff like that. So here's a quote from, a, uh, from Art Hogan, the chief marketing strategist at National Securities. He says, I think this is the quarter that the underperforming sectors will mean revert higher because we, likely, we have likely overdone that trade that has ignored everything cyclical. So he says that the underperformers are going to make a comeback this quarter. That's what he believes. I don't know. It's going to be very difficult for us to take a look at Microsoft, Apple, or Amazon and try to confirm those rallies with something we learned from the second quarter. I do agree with what he's saying. Basically, he's saying that it's hard to imagine anything happening in the second quarter in terms of earnings announcements that justifies the massive rallies that these companies have had. But uh, remember, life is more than just what happens in the second quarter. So I, you know, I'm looking at long-term business potential. Tech stocks are winning in this economy because basically everything's happening from home now. And so, um, so some of these valuations may be justified. The problem is that the information is so muddy that you really can't, you know, it's it's you're, you're being very precise about something that where, where you don't know anything about. You know, you you have a very precise way of calculating the garbage that you're putting into your your very precise equation, meaning that your your analytics, you know, the, all the equations that determine a stock price, which, you know, that's what we teach, right, as, as finance professors are all these formulas, present value models, or whatever. The formulas are very precise. The problem is that the information is imprecise. So the output is going to be imprecise. So because right now, nobody knows what's going on. Everybody's guessing. Um, but the guesses matter because you can pull the guesses together. And even though they're pretty dispersed, much more dispersed than they were before, you can still get some inference out of that. So um, anyway, uh, so shares of major tech companies were coming off a sharp reversal that negated the broader market rally uh, in the previous session. The NASDAQ rose nearly 2% to a record before ending Monday's session down 2%. Uh, and, uh, and so now oh, the last piece that's going on that's really interesting are the banks. So you had a, a tale of two banks. You've got JP Morgan that did really well. JP Morgan killed it, came out with, you know, a better than expected earnings. Thank God I'm happy to be a shareholder of JP Morgan Chase. So that's the hooray for us. Right. And, um, and, uh, and so they did pretty well. Um, Citigroup did okay. They had a, a big jump in trading revenue. Wells Fargo struggled. They fell, their, their stock price fell 4.6% after they reported a $2.4 billion loss and they mutilated their dividend. They, it went from 51 cents a share down to 10 cents a share. When companies uh, reduce their dividend, that is a bad signal to investors telling them that we're in trouble because a lot of companies, some companies that have sturdy dividends will actually even go borrow money just to maintain their dividend, just to keep up the front. So basically, uh, Wells Fargo is admitting that despite the fact that they can pull in $18.4 billion in revenue each year, they're, they're just getting their butts kicked right now. And it's kind of interesting because it's a pretty sizable bank. $18 billion is a lot of money. Uh, so here's a quote from Susan Schmidt, head of U.S. equities um, at uh, AV, Aviva Investors. She says, What's so influential about the banks reporting early in the earnings season in times like these is that we're really counting on banks management teams to view what is going on. Uh, banks are the foundation of our U.S. economy. They are there to provide loans to small businesses and manage the retail customers. So yes, banks are the canaries in the mine. Banks can tell you what's going on with the economy because people borrow from banks. And if people can't pay their mortgages, then banks are going to know because banks are going to say, hey, you're not paying this back. Uh, and then their profits will drop. And then also uh, small businesses. Small businesses, I think, small, very small businesses and consumers, unfortunately, were the ones left out in all this Fed activity 
to stimulate the recovery. Big companies, big corporations had access to the PPP loans. Um, I know a lot of even small businesses that just had solid accounting infrastructure that were able to get massive PPP loans. There were tech companies that actually had profits that quadrupled during the pandemic. And then you had those that unfortunately got left behind. So hopefully the next stimulus check, which there will be a stimulus coming up pretty soon. I believe they're gonna put out a stimulus before the deadline, I think, which is about August 7th. That's when Congress goes on a recess. Um, hopefully that'll be something that um, that helps people you know, get on their feet. Um, I think they're gonna cut that unemployment check. I, I think that that $600 a week is being seen as too much and they wanna incentivize people to wanna to go back to work. So, uh, you know, it is what it is. I'm not gonna get into the politics of it all because uh, as my shirt says, I'm not Democrat or Republican, I'm just black and I'm black every day of the week and twice on Sundays. So that's my breakdown of what's going on in the market. So uh, if you are an investor, congratulations. It looks like you're doing well, you're making money. Make sure you diversify, be careful with your investments. You may wanna look into some option strategies to protect your portfolio. If you want to learn more about how stock options are traded and how to add them to your portfolio, we meet every Wednesday night in the Black Business School. We have 105,000 students now. Uh, we, we gain a couple thousand students every single month. You're welcome to join us. Uh, you can go to drboycemasterclass.com. That's drboycemasterclass.com. And that's what I use every ounce of my PhD to make sure that you understand everything you need to know to uh, build wealth for your family. So feel free to check it out. Have a good day. Hit the thumbs up button, share, subscribe, all that stuff, and follow the Black Financial channel on Instagram if you're not doing that already. Have a good day, everybody. I shall see you soon. Bye-bye. Here we are, clan, the isms, cataclysm, great. Our people out here struggling, trying to make it in this state. Everybody out here doing it, but we the ones who late. Now, family, we the ones who gotta delegate. Get that money in the power, never be fake. Stick to co-sign for three, what did he say? Uh, create jobs, support our own. Educate the same and buy back your home. Got three degrees, triple ten. Three PhDs, now we on the CNN. DBTV, let's talk about negligence. Ignorance is bliss, but we can turn into intelligence. Believe none of what you hear, half of what you see. Let's break it down here on Dr. Boyce TV. Here we are.